today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savell. Read these stories that I'm sharing with you. That's what they're designed to do, is to build your confidence and build your faith in the ability that God has to do what men say He can't do and to do what others say is impossible. The God we serve, His name is El Shaddai, the God in whom nothing is impossible. If we're going to the maximum and the highest level attainable, then it's going to take thinking bigger. Thinking bigger. You, you may have been a small thinker all your life. I was before I came to Christ. I didn't know any better. I didn't know the word. I'd never been trained to think big. I just, I just followed the course of the world. Whatever, whatever they said is what, it, what I believed. Until I got... Uh, I, until I accepted Christ in 1969 and began to get in the Word of God, and it changed everything about me. It changed my outlook. It changed the, my thoughts. It changed my beliefs. And, and you know, today, when, when God does something big in my life, which He's always doing, we have a phrase in Texas, and you'll hear me say it, b because I'm thinking you know, who am I that God would do this for? And the phrase we have in Texas is, who to thunk it? Anybody ever heard that? Who to thunk it? And sometimes I just go around pinching myself. Is this really happening to me? Is God really doing this for me? Hallelujah. Who to thunk it? But the more quality time you spend with God, quality time in his word, you're going to notice your, your thinking is going to go to a higher level. You're going to quit limiting God and you're going to quit limiting yourself. Can you say amen? amen. Look at your neighbor and say, that's good preaching. You ought to be shouting, praise God. Amen. amen. Now notice here, Peter was not expecting the unexpected, but Jesus was. And here's a story that can inspire your faith that God is capable of doing what you don't expect him to do. But if you keep reading stories like this, you'll get to the place where you will expect the unexpected. Amen. Amen. Go with me to uh, uh, verse 17, same chapter. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them all. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy. They sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. When they could not find by what any way they might bring him into it because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst there before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, man, thy sins are forgiven. And then later he says, I say unto thee in verse 24, arise, take up thy couch and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that wherein he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Look at verse 26. And they were all amazed and they glorified God saying, and, and were filled with fear saying, are filled with awe, saying, we have seen strange things today. I like to say it this way. We have just seen the unexpected. We have just witnessed the unexpected. They didn't, they didn't expect that man to get up and walk off and carry his couch back home with him. But Jesus is famous for doing the unexpected. And the Bible says when they witnessed this, they were all amazed. Well, if you read stories like this, yes, you'll be amazed at how powerful he is and how loving and how kind he is, but it won't amaze you that he's able to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. I like to say, I serve the God of surprises. It doesn't surprise me that he does what he says he's going to do it surprises me in how he goes about doing it. 
Amen. He's the God of surprises. He's the God that does the unexpected. And now I expect the unexpected. I expect surprises. I get up every day and expecting God to do something unexpected. I get up every day expecting God to surprise me. And it's very few days I go to bed before I've experienced the unexpected or a surprise of some kind. In fact, Richard Roberts and, and Lindsay and Carol and I were all together. They'd spent a few days with us and uh, we were, we'd gone to lunch and we were on our way back home afterwards. Richard and I are sitting in the back seat. Carolyn's driving and Lindsay's up there with her and we're all got our own conversations going on. And all of a sudden my phone indicated that I had a message. I said, excuse me, Richard, I got a message here I need to read. And the, and the message said, dear brother Jerry, I'm one of your partners. I've heard you talk about the 65 GTO you used to race when Carolyn and you first married and said, I have a 65 GTO that I've completely restored and I'd just like to know if you'd like to have it, I'd like to bless you with it. I said, Richard, read this. Richard read it. And then I heard God say, surprise. And Richard and I are shouting in the back seat and, and they, Carolyn and Lindsay said, what are you guys shouting about? I said, listen to this. And I gave the phone to Lindsay and she started reading it. And then she started singing, little GTO, you're really looking fine. Three deuces and a four speed and a 389. You don't know the song? Where have you people been? Huh? He, he's always surprising me. Now, Joe's traveled with me. Joe and I are first cousins. We've, we, we've known each other all of our lives. I'm about 12 days older than Joe. I keep telling him now that we're up in our late 70s, Joe, you can be older now if you want to. <laughs> he, he, won't take, he won't take it. He, just, he wants to be 12 days younger. But, but Joe started working with me over 40 years ago. We traveled all over the world together. You can ask him. You can work anybody that travels with me. Does God surprise Brother Jerry often? All the time. Why? Because I expect it. Not because I'm so good. I expect it because he's so good. Amen? I expect it. And he's always surprising me. He's always doing the unexpected. Amen. So notice here, they were, they said, we've seen strange things today. I like to say it this way. We've seen the unexpected today. Now in John chapter 11, I'm not going to ask you to turn there, but, but just uh, briefly, I want you to listen to this. It's a story of Lazarus. And uh, in verse 11, or John chapter 11, verse 21, it says, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. And this is what Martha said. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Verse 22, she says, uh, but whatsoever thou ask of God, God will give it thee. And Lazarus had died. In verse 23, Jesus said to her, but your brother shall rise again. And she thought he was talking about in the last resurrection. And she said, Lord, I know that he will rise again in the last day. But Jesus is talking about now. He's talking about expect the unexpected. He's not talking about someday in the sweet by and by. He's talking about now. But she thought he was talking about, you know, in the last days, he'll, he'll rise. But Jesus is encouraging her to expect the unexpected, but she didn't catch it. And then he goes to the tomb and says, take away the stone. Martha speaks up and said, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he's been dead four days. Don't sound like somebody expecting their brother to be raised from the dead. Sounds like somebody expecting a foul smell if they roll away the stone. But Jesus is endeavoring to get her to expect the unexpected. Yeah. Do you think raising Lazarus from the dead was hard on Jesus? Notice he didn't say, 
I'll be back in about a month. I'm going to fast and pray, and then we're going to see if we can do something about this. No, he just turned and said, roll away the stone. Uh-oh. Lord, don't make a fool of yourself. He stinks. He's been dead three days. Does that matter to Jesus? He wants her to expect the unexpected. That's what he wants you and me to do. Expect the unexpected. How will God ever get that amount of money to me? By expecting the unexpected. How will God turn this situation around for me? By expecting the unexpected. And if you're having trouble expecting the unexpected, read these stories that I'm sharing with you. That's what they're designed to do is to build your confidence and build your faith in the ability that God has to do what men say he can't do and to do what others say is impossible. The God we serve, his name is El Shaddai, the God in whom nothing is impossible. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, from this night forward, I'm going to expect the unexpected and give the Lord a shout in advance for it. Praise God. Amen. So when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, it wasn't because Martha expected the unexpected. It was because he expected the unexpected. Listen to what Jesus said, talking to his father. I know that you hear me always. I know that you hear me always. Jesus expected Lazarus to come out of that tomb. Amen. So I'm endeavoring to challenge you to get to the place where you expect the unexpected. These are some of the ways that God is going to take you to the maximum and the highest level attainable. Now, a verse in the book of Job. I want you to go to Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. In chapter 5, one of Job's friends endeavors to explain to him the cause of his trouble. And beginning in verse 8, he encourages Job to seek God and to commit his way to him. And then he makes this powerful statement, beginning in verse 8. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause, which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Now, highlight verse 9 if you haven't already, or make a, a star around it or something, underline it, so it jumps out at you every time you pass by Job chapter 5. Speaking of God, he said, which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things, without number. Now, some of the things that Job's friend said in this chapter were sincere, but not entirely true. And if you look in the very last chapter of the book of Job, chapter 42, God rebukes this man for saying some things that were not entirely true. And he says in Job 42, 7, for you have not spoken of me the thing that is right. However, what he said in verse 9 are words that we are to remember and words to hold on to because they are definitely truth, a great truth. Now, I want to read it to you from the message translation. After all, speaking of God, he's famous for great and unexpected acts. There's no end to his surprises. God is famous for great and unexpected acts and there's no end to his surprises. Amen. Amen. Say that with me. God is famous for great and unexpected acts, and there's no end to his surprises. Amen. The God we serve is famous for unexpected acts. He's famous for surprises. Hallelujah. Then why aren't most of the body of Christ experiencing them? because they don't expect it. They don't expect it. Am I the rare breed here tonight? <laughs> I expect it. Yes. Amen. And he's done it so many times in my life that it's caused me to get up every day with an expectancy that before the sun sets, God is going to surprise me in some way. 
God is going to do something that was unexpected. Hallelujah. I remember a number of years ago, I was, uh, I was flying a, a Citation 500 uh, Eagle and uh, the Lord uh, impressed upon me to sow it into another ministry. And so I did. I gave it to this other ministry. And uh, so usually when I sow a plane, I start believing for my next one. But I, I had no real, uh, you know, inspiration to believe for another one. And so Carolyn asked me, she said, well, what are you believing for now? I said, well, Carolyn, I don't know that I'm believing for another airplane. She said, that doesn't sound like you. She said, you've been believing for airplanes ever since we've been in the ministry. And uh, I said, well, I don't know that I need another airplane right now. Uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm uh, in my twilight years, so to speak. I've accomplished most of everything God said for me to do. Uh, I, I got grandchildren I'd like to spend more time with. Now I have great grandchildren. I didn't have them back in, when this took place. And, you know, I have a nice home. I'd like to see it every once in a while. <laughs> and so I thought, well, I'm not believing for another airplane. So one long after that, I'm in Branson preaching at Keith Moore's church. And after the service, uh, Keith said, Brother Jerry, I heard you gave your airplane away. I said, I did. He said, what are you believing for now? I said, well, Keith, I don't know that I'm believing for another airplane right now. He said, really? I said, yeah, I just really hadn't had any desire to, you know, strike out in my faith on another airplane. And so we just left it at that. So not long after that, I, I flew up to Baltimore, flew commercial up to Baltimore to do a meeting. And the pastor picked me up. And the pastor was a born-again Jewish man. And most of his congregation were born-again Jews. And when he picked me up at the airport, he said, Brother Smell, I'm surprised that uh, you came commercial. Don't you have your own airplane? I said, I, I did. I just gave it away not too long ago. He said, what are you believing for now? <laughs> Sounds like to me, anybody knows Jerry Savelle, he's believing for an airplane, you know? <laughs> So I said, same thing to him. I said, well, pastor, I'm not sure that I need another airplane right now. So he took me to the hotel and I got freshened up and then he came back and got me and took me to the meeting. Then after the service, uh, he wanted me to meet all of his family. We went out to dinner and uh, we didn't get back to the hotel until about one o'clock in the morning. And I had to catch a flight and, and, and go to uh, New Jersey the next morning. And so uh, I packed away everything that I didn't need during the night. And while I'm packing my suit, I heard the Lord say, are you done? Are you finished? I said, done and finished with what? He said, the ministry. I said, no, sir, I'm not done. I'm not finished. He said, well, what did I tell you when you first started the ministry? I said, well, you said a lot of things to me. He said about aviation. I said, you told me I wouldn't be able to fulfill what I'm called to do without airplanes in my ministry. He said, I'll ask you again. Are you done? Are you through? Are you retiring? I said, no. He said, then what makes you think you can do what I've called you to do without airplanes now if you're not finished and you're not done? I said, I stand corrected. You don't want to argue with God. You're going to lose. So the next morning I flew to New Jersey and uh, did my meeting. Then I flew home the next day. And as soon as I walked in the house, I said, Carolyn, forget everything I said about not believing for an airplane. She said, I didn't think that would last very long. <laughs> and I told my staff, I had a staff meeting and said, uh, you know, they wanted to know, you know, inquiring minds want to know what you believe for next. And I told the staff, I don't think I'm believing for another airplane. I had to go and correct that. And they all knew that that wasn't going to last very long. <laughs> so not long after that, I mean, just a matter of probably less than 48 hours, I get a call from Keith Moore. He said, Brother Jerry, when you were here the other day preaching at our church and I asked you about what you're believing for in aviation next and you told me uh, what you said, he said, that didn't set well with me. He said, we've been, we've been talking 
And uh, are you sure you're not bleeding for another airplane? I said, and I told him the story. I said, Keith, I had to correct that. God got all over me about that. And I said, I'm back on my faith and I'm believing for my next airplane. He said, what are you believing for? Well, I told him what I thought I would like to have. And he said, are you sure about that? I said, well, I'm not saying thus saith the Lord. I said, I've, been, I've, I've looked at this airplane before. It's a nice airplane. And uh, I said, and I'm not saying this is thus saith the Lord. I said, what do you ask? He said, well, I was praying and the Lord told me, he said, I'm believing for my, my next airplane. And he told me to sow what I'm flying now into your ministry. Will you receive my airplane so I can believe for my next one? I said, well, I wouldn't want to stop your harvest. You know? <laughs> so he blessed me with the airplane he was flying, which was a Citation 5. So when we got it, and then it was a nice airplane, and he told me, he said, now, you know, I know in you, you're going to want to do some upgrades and so forth. And, and, and so I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I will. And so we started doing all the upgrades, and now uh, I've, we have turned it into the finest Citation 5 in the world. There's not another one quite like it. Everything is state of the art. New paint job, new interior, new engines, new avionics, everything. We flew it here this time. And uh, uh, I put in the, in, the, in the, as you enter the airplane, on the wall here by the galley, I had a plaque made. And you can read it when you walk in the plane. I call that airplane above and beyond. <laughs> above and beyond. It was above and beyond what I thought I needed. God said, I do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. Amen. Amen. Above and beyond. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, would, would you agree with me that was a surprise? Yes. I didn't know God was going to talk to Keith and Phyllis. I didn't know that was going to happen. All I knew was God corrected me by saying, are you done? Are you through? You don't need airplanes anymore. You must be retiring. No, 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 God, I correct that. But I had no idea that he was going to do it that way. It didn't surprise me that God blessed me with another airplane. It surprised me in who he used and how it came. Amen. So stay open all the time. Don't, don't tell God how to meet your need. I learned a long time ago, young in the ministry, that you don't, you don't get focused on certain individuals that look like they're capable. Look, look, look at them alligator shoes. Oh, that guy's probably capable of meeting my need. No, I, I don't do that, and I never have, and I never will. I've had God use the least likely. Didn't look like they had two quarters to rub together. Amen. Amen. And, and, and one man called me one day and said, uh, are you in town? I said, yes, I am. He said, come by my office before you go home. I just, I just flew in. Come by my office before you come home. I said, well, uh, where's your office? I'm not sure I know where it is. He told me, I said, oh, then that's the office your dad had when he was still living. He said, yeah. He said, come back before you go home. So I went by there. He called his wife in. I sat across from his desk. He pushed an envelope across the desk in front of me. He said, uh, open that. My wife and I wanted to see the expression on your face when you open it. Now, I had no idea this was going to happen that day. I just flew in. Like tomorrow, I'm going to get on my airplane. I'm going to fly home. I had no idea when I flew home that day that this was going to happen. But God is the God of surprises. And he said, open that envelope. I opened it, and it was a check for $1 million for the ministry. He said, I told you several years ago, when my daddy died, and I inherited the business, that the business was going down the tubes. And he said, now I got your book on From Devastation to Restoration. 
and I read it three times in the, in the period of a, of a month. And he said, and I told my wife, we're coming out of this. God's going to turn this around. And when he does, I'm going to bless Brother Jerry's ministry big time. Are you tired of settling for mediocrity? It's time to break free from limiting beliefs and unleash your maximum potential. Introducing today's transformational offer, the Becoming Maximum Results Minded Special Package. This remarkable package includes Jerry Savelle's eye-opening book, God's Word in Troubled Times, along with his power-packed 50th anniversary USB flash drive, featuring 50 of Jerry's most sought-after inspiring audio messages. In this package, Jerry reveals God's strategy for overcoming life's challenges, the keys to accessing supernatural blessing, how to experience unstoppable momentum in your life, and the secret to receiving God's promises. Don't wait any longer. Visit jerrysavelle.org or call us now to secure your copy of the Becoming Maximum Results Minded Special Package. Don't allow small thinking to hold you back. Begin to seize God's maximum results today. Thank you so very much for joining us today and we appreciate you watching and let me encourage you, don't forget that if you want God's best, then you're gonna to have to come, become maximum minded. That's how you position yourself to experience everything that God has for you. And once again, don't settle for anything less. I'm happy to have my daughter, Jerry Ann, with me today. And she's going to talk to you about some of the resources that are available. Well, I think it's so important, Dad, like the message that you just shared, to get it in you over and over again. You know, you can hear it one time, but it's just not enough. No. I think it's so powerful and so important that you hear the word over and over. And what a perfect way to do that with this. It's the 50th anniversary edition, 50 of my dad's classic, most popular messages. You can just put this on and listen over and over again and get the word down in you because when you get the word in you, then you're not gonna think small That's anymore. Right. Another part of this package that we're offering is God's Word in Troubled Times, a book that my dad wrote. I love books because you can write in them, mark in them, read it over and over. So I encourage you to get a copy of this for yourself and also a Christmas gift. What a perfect gift to give someone the Word of God. Yes. So amen. go to jerrysavelle.org and you can order your copy and get a copy for someone else. Amen. And once again, we appreciate all of you watching and thank you partners for helping us and continuing to contribute to the ministry. You're helping us get the word of God out to masses of people all over the world. We pray that each and every one of our partners will experience maximum results throughout the remainder of this year and next year and beyond, praise God. Be sure and watch again next week as we continue this study on becoming maximum results minded. We'll see you then.